so today the session is uh, Today the session is uh, divided in two parts, basically, uh, where we are going to, uh, to deal with the two dimensions of the question about uh, how community-based uh, adaptation can be developed in uh, urban communities. Uh, in the first part, uh, I will introduce uh, um, experience-based tools uh, using uh, a specific case study of uh, a marginalized area uh, of uh, uh, East Naples in South Italy in order to provide some practical learning about the process of uh, co-production uh, in action research activities uh, oriented to collaborative adaptation practice. And in the second part, uh, we are uh, dealing with the dimension of grassroots initiatives of uh, transition movement and how these communities are developing self-made tools to foster a, a commons-based resilience. And uh, uh, in this part, we are going to test one of these tools uh, on how uh, these communities start uh, an inner and uh, an outer transition. Um, why we call it uh, do-it-yourself uh, adaptation? Because we recognize on the ground that many initiatives um, are burning in a practical way uh, to respond to everyday issues. Um, and uh, if it's uh, climate change, it's not always, always the central point in the action. Urban communities are tackling those uh, initiatives uh, uh, dealing with, the, in, with the, in the environmental matter in a way uh, that uh, foster as well uh, processes of transition towards equity, justice and uh, solidarity. Carrying on solutions, uh, practical solutions and measures uh, that are inspired from these values uh, in order to achieve sustainable lifestyles uh, in a self-made manner that is implying uh, self-organization, cooperative actions, uh, civic engagement. Um, in my experience, uh, I, I basically a scholar that works with uh, uh, climate change adaptation and uh, disaster risk, risk reduction. Uh, so I will show today action research experiences that uh, are focused on the research question on how uh, disaster risk reduction and climate change adapt adaptation can act on the ground without neglecting marginalized and vulnerable communities in the process of planning and redesign cities to cope with the climate change. Um, my experiences, uh, well, as I said, uh, are um, basically carried on in Chile and Italy, and uh, I worked uh, to develop tools that can bridge robust science, local values, uh, and knowledge, uh, and uh, challenging you know, a shift uh, from top-down and uh, expert-driven uh, decision-making to an inclusive and uh, democratic one. Um, in, in this case, uh, we, if the first part of the presentation is done on this uh, uh, theoretical also framework, um, the second part it will more be more focused on the idea of resilience so that it's questioning ne the neoliberal model and uh, it's uh, made by the upsurge of resilience activism that supports in fact uh, local communities uh, um, in an adaptive and transformative way uh, that are challenging capitalism dynamics, uh, realizing uh, uh, new experiments you know, on social level and uh, economic level and uh, as well ecological level. So um, the second part of the transition is, uh, uh, is uh, somehow challenging the, the neoliberal model uh, in which many of, many of the urban policies for adaptation are, uh, um, are um, based. Uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, uh, somehow dealing with the empowerment of community and, and the key role in participation in the um, political debate and uh, a, a collaborative uh, and uh, um, and a collaborative and cooperation uh, uh, model. Um, mm, 
the experiences model, the experience based models that we are going to, to see for uh, do it to yourself adaptation, as I told, are based on the case study of Naples, that uh, is a vulnerable area of the city that uh, experienced a, a, a shocking urbanization process. Um, we are in a multi-risk uh, uh, contest uh, in which uh, the volcanic and seismic uh, um, risks uh, are uh, um, now combined, combined with the climate change uh, related uh, risks. And uh, basically the urbanization of uh, this area occurred uh, after a post-earthquake uh, uh, intervention uh, that changed completely the, 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 the um, the characteristics of uh, this uh, area. Uh, this uh, part of the tools that we are going to, to discuss today uh, are, were um, connected to a project that uh, modelized and uh, quantify also the climate change risk, um, producing uh, vulnerability maps uh, about flash floods and uh, heat waves. Um, in this map, you can see uh, they are shown like uh, uh, the uh, most uh, risky and uh, vulnerable areas of the of the neighborhood. But what what we found uh, working in this neighborhood, it was basically that uh, um, the the strong urbanization that occurred, the massive urbanization that that occurred with the um, post earthquake intervention, um, provoked a disruption of the social ecological system um, in which which the everyday risk was uh, was uh, was uh, dealing with the with the shift in the in the urban fa fabric that that uh, um, that caused uh, many uh, social spatial inequalities. Um, I, I will uh, uh, run on the case study because I, I will invite you to to watch our video documentary that uh, it's in which the story of the neighborhood is uh, detailed. On the other side, this neighborhood, uh, if, uh, was, uh, if it presented the characteristics of poverty and mar marginalization, we found uh, also that uh, the agricultural identity was trying you know, to, to have a re, uh, rebirth uh, uh, of the neighborhood in itself uh, um, through the promotion of grassroots initiatives. And in particular, one initiative that we study and we work with, uh, it's a social garden that took place in a urban park and uh, it's, uh, mm, it's uh, dealing uh, not, not not just with the agricultural identity, but also with the social issues of the area, because uh, it's born as a platform of the networking and sharing of experiences in agricultural, of different kind of of uh, of, uh, of, na of of neighbors of the community. Um, we carried on an action research in the neighborhood uh, where we basically set an urban living lab as a, pro, as a, um, as a tool uh, to foster a participatory process uh, in the research uh, to combine, as we said before, the top-down knowledge of the research with the, with the local knowledge. And we started the, um, uh, this experience with the, with the uh, with the community, uh, dealing basi basically about uh, how climate change affects uh, in, in their daily life for the community, but also um, we discovered a, a strong memory about uh, the water infrastructure that was destroyed by the urbanization. So we started to rediscover the, the neighborhood through the eyes of the community. And uh, we decided uh, with them uh, all to have a video documentary to collect this experience uh, in order to provide uh, a collective storytelling that was uh, um, uh, creating a collective narrative of the neighborhood in which the voice of the researchers that were carrying on a quantitative research you know, about the area were mixed with the local community uh, voices um, 
to, to promote uh, an, an horizontal and mutual learning, but also to promote a, pl a plurality of languages uh, and to have uh, a final product in which also the community was uh, um, somehow respected and, and can, uh, can recognize uh, the identity and uh, the material values that were neglecting in the quantitative research. Uh, so, also in this uh, urban li living lab that we uh, carried on with the community, uh, we decided also to, to, to promote uh, a, um, an experience of uh, uh, self-construction and co-design in order to have a, a real a practical action for climate change adaptation. And uh, working with the community of the social garden, basically we developed a, a, a rainwater management system uh, for to collect rainwater and to use for the irrigation of the social garden, um, trying to create a prototype that, uh, that uh, was, some, was uh, a mix of uh, technical and social uh, um, dimensions. Uh, so we had, uh, uh, we, we test a community-based solution uh, in which uh, the central part was that the technological artifacts uh, and the, the solution was an hybrid uh, assemblage made between experts and non-experts in order to include the material values that was present in the social garden and develop the meanwhile also the know-how of the community uh, to, 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 in order to, uh, to foster a process of uh, empowerment no? uh, of do-it-yourself adaptation because after that uh, the community was able to understand better how the community uh, how a community-based adaptation can, can work uh, and which kind of, of uh, outcomes uh, the process can have. The third part uh, uh, that we de developed for, uh, after the the um, after the uh, after the the urban living lab uh, after a while it it moved from two um, claims the first one was a research claim because uh, we have with the urban climate change research network a workshop in the area that was a, a climate resilient workshop so uh, with the students and architects we were trying to imagine a you know, solution at uh, urban scale for the neighborhood. And uh, for the other claim that came from uh, uh, the, our work with the community, that they were interesting to find a key to deal with the decision maker. So what we, we, we implement, uh, it was a collective mapping uh, with them uh, that uh, was uh, um, merging a quantitative analysis uh, and climate analysis uh, of the area with uh, uh, particular problems and issues that they were encountering, trying to, to have uh, parameters uh, uh, for that. So we create a baseline information um, in which uh, we uh, we we in which we draw no a, a new Im like a a community based uh, uh, map uh, for uh, for uh, climate change adaptation and disaster risk uh, reduction um, that uh, it, it turned in in a kind in a better version of for a platform for decision making because uh, in our mapping we engaged basically also political actors uh, to 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 have this information also included in the, in the recovery plan of the area that uh, uh, is going to be upgraded. Um, this scale of, uh, this urban scale of the, of the, um, of this tool that we are going to, that we saw, we see uh, here, um, it's uh, just an attempt to, 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 to set new tools also for co-production of knowledge and to have something that can be used as well from community and from decision maker, making uh, somehow a bridge between uh, these, uh, the three parts that are engaged in those, uh, um, those co-production co um, processes. 
uh, the, 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 part, uh, um, the last part that we are going to, to see today um, is, uh, as I, I, I said before, is set uh, uh, instead just on grassroots uh, initiatives uh, and uh, in specifically uh, for, on uh, transition. Um, transition uh, is a, a, a special experiment, I will say, because uh, people in transition, and here we, we see the experience that uh, uh, it was in Santiago that we, uh, we had with uh, Mauricio in a transition training, uh, it uh, somehow can be defined an exercise in creating new commons, uh, uh, because uh, community are dealing at uh, local level with the climate change effect uh, um, uh, to discover new tools uh, in which the inner intelligence of the community and uh, the skills uh, that were forgotten are promoting proactive action for the neighborhood uh, in a self-managed manner and uh, um, uh, defining action for sustainability that uh, are determined by local uh, uh, demands. Uh, today we are going to, to test and to, to have a, a practical exercise of backcasting uh, in which uh, the backcasting is one of the principal tool, tools uh, used in a transition movement because it's a tool uh, that, uh, that um, allows the participants to imagine a more positive future for their community. Um, imagine a future that is uh, free from dependency of uh, from uh, fossil fuel, and it's a powerful uh, and it's uh, a powerful uh, tool because uh, it's uh, uh, challenging uh, the uh, uh, the, um, the capitalism imagination and how the capitalism in itself uh, it's taking place uh, at first uh, uh, in our inner space. Um, I will let Mauricio to, to conduct this part of the presentation to introduce us, us better the transition movement and uh, uh, to move forward with the, the exercise. Thank you. Okay, I will continue with the, the presentation. I try to share something here. Uh, okay, it looks like you see the whole screen, isn't it? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Uh, you know, do you see also my pointed there in the screen? You see the point, the arrow there that is moving? Uh, no. no, not now. Okay. I don't know how it works, but anyway, you know, we have here the, the, the background because we started the transition movement, you know, this was because we have here in the, in the, in this graphic, you have the, in the bottom, we have the, the time, uh, in the, and in the left, we have the energy consumption, the research <coughs> consumption and pollution and the, population growing. And you see the, the industrial, West Industrial Society is growing up in all the use of energy, population, pollution, resource, and everything. And we reach a point where we cannot continue, you know, what we call the climax point. We are close, or we are there, or perhaps we passed this already, but uh, we have four possible alternatives, you know. You have the, the techno fantasy, the first one, where uh, the people believe that we are going to have more technology and uh, with all the technology, with everything, we are going to change and continue to grow in like we are growing now. I as particular don't believe too much in that. We have another alternative where you say, you know, we, we have no time, we don't have any alternative, we are going to go down, there's going to be a chaos and we are going to have a, a kind of a scenario like Atlantis, where everything goes down and uh, the society almost disappears and so on. And you have a, a third one that say that we talk about the green tech technology or stability. It's the one the, the most of the industrial country is development today that we, we change a little things in the system that we can continue it in the time, you know. I personally don't believe in that, 
because uh, we don't reduce the consumption in this place, you know, we are always uh, using more and more resource. And I think that it's difficult to, to keep in this label also. And we have a fourth one that we call the creative descendants where we go down in time in consumption and uh, with different technologies like uh, eco village, permaculture, recycling, and all this thing, and we come to a level of less uh, pollution, less uh, use of energy, and we can continue the time. And I think transition is one, is in this point, you know, how we imagine all the system in the new way with the newest knowledge and with the additional one, we can make a new society. And transition uh, is a model, is a mix, where uh, starting from people who work in permaculture, who work in eco-village, and we know already that permaculture work, you know, I mean, you can design ecosystem today. You copy the nature and with permaculture, you can make designs that is heavily productive. And after several years, uh, they are producing food uh, for many, many people, you know, I mean, we have several examples around the world where you can see that this work, but usually this happen almost always outside the cities. And eco is the same, you know, I mean, people who have moved outside the cities and make it more associative and uh, they produce almost everything that they need, they produce their own energy and it's work. But then nothing changes in the big society in some way. And then we say, okay, what we can do? We have, we have to take this uh, information to, to the cities. And then at this time, the people mix permaculture, eco -village, storyteller, self-development, alternative uh, method for participatory, participatory process, you know, and put all this together and with the experience of many people working around the world in practice, they came with a social proposition, you know, a model that you can use in the cities to involve the people in a process, to, to activate them. And the model have four, uh, five parts, the first is an understanding. I mean, we have an understanding between us and we say with peak oil and climate change, we cannot continue like we are doing until now. I mean, we have to change the whole system and we have to be, we have to adapt and to be creative, to find out the new way of living. And we have to start now. I mean, this is the thing that put us together, you know? We don't believe that we can continue like that. We have to adapt and we have to be creative and we have to start to doing this just now. And permaculture also has this principle that we are going to see, see but, but, yeah, are we going to do, but this is the problem, that problem, isn't it? We are going to see that. We have four steps and we also have a transition network who support all this kind of work. In the five, prin seven principles, we have uh, that we have to envision a positive future, you know, the old political party knew how to use the imagine, the vision of the future. They call this utopy, you know, and it's very strong psychologically. And we use this in our movement. And we are I'm going to share with you a, a, an exercise that we work a positive imagine of the future. If we have a positive imagine of the future, it's going to, this help us to go further. The people, the other principle is that we, if we, we give people to the, right, to the right access, to the right information, we grew that the people is going to, to make the good decision. And this is what uh, we believe. Uh, we also believe in inclusion and we need everyone to change these things. I mean, it's not the work of a little group, of an organization. It has to be everyone who are involved. You know, therefore we are inclusive, we include everyone. We, we share and networking. We have the knowledge and we share this with other people. And uh, we may network to support each other and to growing up. And uh, we make it, this viral, this moment, we try to make a viral model. And I'm going to show at the end some picture that uh, talk about that. And it's easy to replicate. Uh, we have to, the other principle that we have, we have to build res, uh, resilience. We have to be a strong community uh, and the base to, to, how you say, to allow the life in this planet. And the other thing that I like uh, very much and who attract me to this movement is that they say, okay, we have to do a transition 
offside, I mean, how the world look like, but we also have to do a transition ourselves, like human beings, like person, individuals. And we are going to share something like that. I have been working with this kind of thing in the Lotus year, and I see clear that uh, without changing ourselves, we don't have chance to do anything. Uh, the other is that we try to organize ourselves and make the decision at the more lower level that we can. You know, I mean, decentralization is very useful and a very grounding in the transition time. This is the seven principles, and we have seen that. Mauricio? Yes. Uh, uh, sorry, but the presentation, it looks always uh, the first page. So really? we are not going on with the, with the slides. And now? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm going to leave it there and continue from there, OK? Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Seven but, you know, always when you see we are going to do something, you you hit, you, you hear a question like, we don't have money, you know? And I am agree. I had the experience to sit here in, in Oslo, in Norway, the first transition town movement, and we didn't have money. But we didn't need it at the beginning, you know, because we do a lot of things without money. After they say they will, they will not let us. You know, sometimes we believe that the system is so strong that it's everywhere. But actually, you find a lot of space to do things around. And uh, especially in a small group in local community, I mean, I haven't heard that uh, it was impossible, you know. You can start things. The other is that you, you are going to start a work with the other green group. And in practice, you know, what I experienced that actually you don't get, the, I mean, if you are social clever enough, you get these green people uh, uh, to get them like a lie, you know, because transition have a characteristic, you know, that they group a lot of people. And you have several organiz green organizations that they don't have too much people. And they, if you invite them, they come to you and they have a lot of knowledge and they're very useful for, for us. Another thing that they say perhaps today as it has changed the couple in the last couple of years, that nobody cares about the environment. Today we have a, a more strong movement and more high awareness about the environmental problem. The others say, but you know, perhaps it's too late. Anyway, can be, but unless we are going to try, we are going to try to do something. We never know what can happen in the way, you know, but I think that we have to try to do something. The other they say, I don't, but you know, I don't know nothing. I, I don't know, I don't have the right qualification to do that. Therefore, transition also put an effort and a strong effort, and we're going to see that in reskill the people. I mean, really are things that can be useful to do things. And I know from uh, practice, you know, that the, the people who are starting transition usually discover themselves, discover potential and abilities that they didn't knew that they have, you know and they change in the process and they empower and they make big change in their life and for the other people also. And the other thing is that we don't have energy to do that. The other but, but actually therefore we, we put the focus in a transition, you know, that what we are doing, it has to be, uh, how you say, funny. It has to, go, to be join, joyful. I mean, we don't have time to meet together and to be boring, you know, we have to do the thing in a, in a wrong way slick in the way that we can, uh, how you say, really may seem interesting. And I'm going to share with you very quickly the 12 steps that we have. You know, we have to make a group, a steering group, a little group of people who want to do something. And you can start with that. And after you do, you have a little group, you connect uh, people and you call people making action teams, group, of, group who, who who come together and do things in a, how you say, according to their interest. And we use a lot of participative mob, uh, method. One of them is the open space, where you invite the people to a meeting with our agenda in the way that you can, can with them, can together uh, catch the interest of the people and make a small group according to this interest. We are going to make also several, uh, how you say, activities to raise awareness in our local community about the different problems that we are uh, facing. We also are very uh, uh, set, we put the focus also when we do some project in this small group, is that this project 
we can show this project to the community, you know. Always we have an special focus in where we are going to put the thing that we are going to do, you know. Because we need that the neighborhood see that we are not only a talking group, but an action group, a group who's doing things. We also have to try to revival, revival the snowly on the how, how to, how to, to, to repair things, how to grow in food, how to, to do a lot of things. We are no confronters of the group, therefore we are going to, to bridge, make bridge with the local government and to try to see what we can do together, or what we can help, or how we can ask them to do. We are going to connect with other groups in the local local community. And one thing that I like it also, especially in the West, that we are going to honor the elder people, because the elder people are less knew how to live without oil, you know. And when we have been working a while, we are going to make a, a big party to launch, launch our uh, initiative, to make noise, to, to show like we are doing something. And one thing that is was difficult for me when I start with transition, because I am a person who want to plan, make plans, is to lay, let the process go where they want to go. And this is difficult for me, you know, because I, I start something, I, I know where I'm going to go. But when you invite other people, when other dreams come together, Everything is beginning to change, you know. It's no longer your project, but it's the project of everyone. And until now, it has been well, good, and the people have been very responsible about that. I want to show you the next slide. Here you have a, the, the group who start, you know, like an awareness campaign, work, the small working group working together, and they have a lot of interesting things. But one of the things that I like most is that you have to work in any transition. Transition demand, this transition group to do something about any transition. What? It can be whatever, but it has to be something because without raising the question what you are doing in life, what is really values in your life, you are, it will be very difficult to work together. One of the things that we use is the open space it's a participating method. They don't know how, how many of you know about that, but it's a very good tool to collect energy, you know, to you invite the neighborhood without an agenda. And the agenda is made with the people who come to the place. And then you use this technique to put a small, to, 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 to put a small group according to the interests of the people. And usually you start working group from there. You have also, what I told you, if you're going to make a hospital like here, you go and uh, make this public where the people can see that, you know. Whatever you do, in whatever group, always think how the people can see what we are doing. Also, we have to rescue the people to do the thing that we like, like, uh, for instance, how you prepare food, how you repair things, how you take care of the beeps, how you make house. I mean, many, many kind of workshops. And this has shown that the people have interest and willing to learn about these things. And also we add, like trying the world, we added a starting point, that principle, a step that where we say that it's not fun, it's not sustainable. We don't know if we're going to make it. We don't know if we're going to reach it. But unless we are going to try, try to, to have fun in the process. You see a map that we take in uh, 2011, where uh, a lot of initiatives have started around the world. I mean, this process happened very quickly, and now we have a, uh, we are growing even, and we have more than 900 initiatives around the world. The most of them alive and lively, doing things and making things happen. And now I want to invite you, because we are going to to make a a, a work together here. I want you to relax. I want you to sit back in your chair and we are going to, to do to, to make a journey. Now we are going to go to a journey to a possible future for your community to explore what this world may look like guided by this process and your imagination. Okay, then 
I will ask you to sit comfortable in your chair. You may want to have your spine straight and you feel your flat, your feet in the floor, you are grounded. Please focus in the here and now. Just let your attention come to this present moment. Please close your eyes and breathe in and out slowly, three times. One, keep it, and now. Again, breathe in, and now. Again. Out. Imagine that you are going to sleep tonight in your bed. And while you are sleeping, a miracle, miracle happens. And you are transported to the future where the transition has already happened. The big change that are needed for a sustainable planet has happened. You, ha you are about to wake up in a different world. Imagine now that you are wake up in your bed. You stretch and look around. What do you see different? Is the light? Is the song or the light of song? How you your room look like? Let your imagination give you pictures without trying to think with your head. Just let sensations, smells, sounds, sights arise in your awareness. How you get ready for the day in this different world? What clothes are you putting on? How it is feel in your body? Now, you're going out of your room to find something to eat. How this place look like? Which song do you hear? How it smell?
what is the food like? How is taste? Who else are there? Are you alone? And now you are going to go out of your house to your day's activities. What do you see outside? What do you see now in the place where it was raw before? How is the air you breathe? What kind of song do you hear? Do you see more people there? Now you have to go to your place of work. How you transport there? What are you doing at work? Are other people there? Just gives time yourself to notice some of the details. Perhaps you have a conversation with someone else. What do you notice about this person? How is the expression on these people's face? What is the quality of connection that you have with them? Just less time pass in this future world. So you are coming to the evening now. And even in this new world, there are still meetings to go to. So imagine you are still going to this kind of meeting. Perhaps a decision is needed. Something has to be resolved. Perhaps it's a community meeting, or a spiritual gathering, or a celebration. How do you feel going to this event? How is to be there with this group of people? How does people talk with each other? Now it's time to go home.
at this point of your journey, you stop and notice nature around you. Do you look the sky? What do you see? Do you see the living environment around you? Is there anything here that feel new or surprising? And now your day in this future place is ending. How do you feel to end of your day? You go home, you go to your bed and fall asleep again. Please breathe in, deep in and out three times. Last time. Now. Let yourself come back to this year, 2020, to your place, to your transition webinar. You can open your eyes now. Okay. I'm Thank finished. you very much, Mauricio. It was super interesting. There are many questions in the chat, and time is almost finished, so we should uh, try to answer some of them. Uh, first of all, I ask both of you, Christina and Mauricio, to write your email address in the chat so people can, can contact you in case they have to leave right now. Okay. Yes, I, I'm going to uh, to send also the, the links. Uh, yeah, for the, for the documents, yeah. and also there is someone that was asking the to have the presentation if possible. This uh, presentation. We will see also with the organization because they recorded the, already the session, so it will be available uh, for all the participants on the website of the conference. Okay, so first question is uh, Chris, uh, for Christina. What platform you uh, are using for data sharing? Uh, well, I, I think it was about, uh, it yeah. is about the, the mapping, the particip participatory mapping. We use basically Google uh, Maps uh, because we had recognized that uh, uh, students and also the community that was engaged, it, it was a more friendly user tool for them. But uh, in another case, uh, in Chile, I used the uh, OpenStreet View. So it's uh, 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 Open Maps, sorry. Uh, so it's uh, basically these two tools. And we also trying to, to, to switch many information on uh, GIS also. Okay. And uh, another question for both of you. Um, it's more a comment than a question is about money. Um, <clears throat> there is some, someone that is asking is uh, underlying how much is important to uh, to 
the money factor from registration of an organization to organizing and growing the started organization, money is needed. Do you want to comment? I can't tell you the experience here in Saguenay when we started transition. Uh, we can't. Do you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Yeah. When we start here, yeah, the, now we, can. we didn't have problem with the money. I mean, even the municipality asked us to, to if we want to have money, you know, we, we didn't need it for the first time. And then it was only at the end of the second year that we really applied to some concrete project that we have. But I don't know, I, have, it's, I, I, I don't want to say that the economical aspect is not important. Obvious is important, you know, if you want to, to make a good work and to dedicate to that, but actually it's a lot of goodwill in between the population and the people who want to do things that allow you to start in the beginning. And I, I had the impression that now, you know, in the last year, in the last couple of years almost, it's more easy to find out funding to different kinds of projects because many, many people is getting, how you say, like what you are doing and uh, easy to get the uh, fall to support you in some way. And actually, one of the things that happened after in Transition Town is that seeing you learn new skill that is needed to make the new world, then you also can make a small companies, you know, and Transition is one of the typical things in Transition is that you, you make a small company to, to different, uh, to develop different, because you develop different skills, new skills. About skills, there is Thea that uh, was asking, what do you um, refer to when you say reskilling workshops? Like, for instance, how you make a compost, how you make a compost with worm, how you make bread, how, how you repair things, how you learn to, to grow in your food, how you learn to fix your uh, bike. I mean, it's according to your interest and where you are and what is in, how you can do, you know, because today the tendency today is that you pay for everything, you know, for every seven and it's okay. But you also have, if you want to be more resilient, we need to learn all this skill ourselves to have the, in some way, to manage to be self-sufficient in some way. And it's very bright, you know, I mean, from the small things to the big things. Okay, thank you. And there are two more questions about information technology. One from Rachel that says, um, in Botswana, we still have a challenge of information technology. For example, internet access is limited. Not everyone has a smartphone or a, or a computer. Not everyone is computer literate. So most, meet, most of meetings with community has to be in person. So it's about the importance of uh, information technology compared to being in person, no? And uh, the, the other question from Miti is um, uh, the challenge of ICT is, uh, so, com is, so, is uh, so common for some rural areas in Bangladesh, especially in northern and southern part of Bangladesh. So both the, the, the they are both asking about, uh, or maybe they are just commenting, not asking about the use of uh, uh, information technology and devices in uh, in the processes that you and Christina talked about. What do you think? Yes, that uh, it's uh, somehow a, a matter also of differences between uh, rural and the urban communities. That it's also a big topic uh, in in the conference yeah. itself. So in my experience uh, and also in Mauricio experience that works uh, also with the indigenous uh, people in Latin America, uh, we think that uh, also one, uh, one topic of the transition is uh, how to, to be free, to set us free from the dependence uh, from technology as well. So uh, I think that it's uh, something that uh, it, it, it has to be taken in account when we do this kind of experiences and the processes, but we have also to figure out a sort of independency from those kind of tools. I think an hybrid, uh, um, an hybrid uh, solution, solution for that, it will be helpful also to be discussed for this kind of a specific site uh, 
problems, uh, I would say. Mariela, and, and even can, I can say that we have the, the opposite problem here in Norway, you know, because we have too much technology. And, and then we, we have the problem how we just connect the use from the, the computers and with the, the, the smart telephone. And then, uh, you know, you, you can, can have an advantage because we, you can do a lot of things, you can share information, but also many use are living in this world. And not necessarily it had to be bad, but uh, when you are using or you are focused all your life in the social media, you disconnect a little bit from the real reality around you, you know? And this is also a challenge for us here in Norway, unless. I, um, if we don't have other questions, I will uh, just send in the chat uh, a PDF with the, with the front page of the presentation and with the useful links uh, to the documentary and other, um, uh, and other uh, resources that we were mentioning uh, during the presentation. So uh, we can, ask, we can uh, also uh, answer to other questions that were in the chat in this way. Um, I don't know if we have other questions or we can just uh, uh, close the session. Uh, no, there is just uh, a link uh, sent by Candice. Thank you, Candice, to share experiences. And there is a request from Jana uh, Joshi that wants to, to watch again the video, the, the, the backcasting video. <laughs> I, if I want to there make is a, a final comment. Uh, maybe a guide. Yeah, you know, I, I want okay. to remark. I mean, one thing. I hope the people who are still here in the in the meeting, uh, I, I want to remark that because I have been working more than thirty years in environmental issues. You know, I start when when the environmental problem was not known in some way for the most of the people. But uh, I find out in the why, you know, and we, in all this time that is you only focus in the thing that you have to make out it's not enough to be sustainable in life you know i mean i think you have to to in some way to be a uh, more uh, focus in how you sell start the process of change on in your belief what are you coming to do in the earth what, what is important for you and really when you begin to write this kind of question for yourself and for your college that you are working with, then you are really making a change. And this change is going to express in some way in what you are doing outside. But without that, you have a fighting of ego, you have a fighting for a, how you say who is the best, and a lot of human sin that we have from this competitive world where we are growing. And then, that, that, that for, for me, the, inter, the inner, inner work in transition is really important. And I, I really believe that if you don't have this kind of stuff in any process, it's difficult to make change that is continued in the time. Thank and I you, want to Mauricio. Thank everyone to be here. Thank you, Mauricio. Very inspiring for all of us. And also thanks to Cristina for the very interesting presentation. So I think we can continue and it would be a pleasure now to continue this interaction also uh, using the emails. So please take notes of our emails and feel free to contact uh, uh, all of us for further information or for sharing other experiences. We will be very happy. <laughs> okay, so thank you and bye. Christina, do you want to add anything before we close the, the room? No, just that uh, thank you, uh, thank you all of you to be part of this uh, session because uh, I think that um, me and Mauricio, we are trying to, uh, to matching towards that uh, so many times are so far away from each other. No, that it's uh, somehow one of the uh, the, the academic uh, uh, world and the grassroots uh, uh, initiatives. No, uh, that we are we are uh, discussing uh, on the same topics but in different rooms. So uh, it was nice to have these two uh, sides of, of, of the same uh, dimension of the same question. I, I mean. Thank you and uh, see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.